everyone and welcome back to Liz Sews and the next video in Vlogmas 2020. This video is sort of a continuation of last month's Inspired by Projects, but I thought it was absolutely perfect for Christmas. I've seen a couple of these Dita Von Tees Madame X bras on Instagram and I absolutely adore them and I think that the emerald green color is stunning. You definitely don't see it off green bras in my opinion. So for this bra, I took a couple of months gathering materials to make this bra. First up, the lace came from Beware, and it's this emerald green lace with gold threaded accents. In a perfect world, I probably would have picked something a little bit darker and richer of a color, but as I had said, there's really not a whole lot of options when it comes to green bra making supplies. After I procured the lace, it was just a matter of the rest of the materials. I decided that my best option was probably going to be to dye them myself. Let's get started on recreating the Dita Von Tees Madame X bra. So in looking at this bra, there's a couple details that I really like and I wanna carry forward in my recreation version of it. And then there's some things that I'm not gonna worry about. So the first thing that I'm gonna sort of not worry about is this stitching detail right here between two lower cut pieces. Uh, I don't think that it has any particular function and it's something that'd be really difficult for me to do. So I'm going to just eliminate that but I do still want to make sure that I'm getting these stitching lines along the lower cut portion here um, probably not the easiest to see in this picture you can see in this picture here how you they have these really nice stitching lines in the lower cup so definitely want to want to carry that forward um, and then I'm going to be using the Lexington bra from orange lingerie is my base pattern and so the things that I like about this I like this open cup detail up here I think what I'm going to do is use like a bra tool that's in my skin tone so I'll have like the appearance that this lace is floating open in there. Certainly I think I could leave it open. I don't know that that there needs to be fabric in there but I just think for myself I would feel more confident if I had an uppercut piece backing that so I'm going to use bra tool behind the lace so it'll still look like that lace is floating but there's bra tool there and similarly for this um, open cut bridge I know that Norma of Orange Lingerie has talked briefly on her blog about just you know you can make this whole bra up and then cut out the fabric that's in that center portion there um, but I, I was thinking about it and like I don't know how to get a good nice clean edge if I just cut it out after the fact. So again, I'm gonna be utilizing some more bra tool that's in my skin tone so it has the appearance of that open bridge without actually having to leave the bridge open. I'm going to mess a little bit with the construction order and, and in instructions of the Lexington bra. So I'm kinda like gonna go out on my own. Um, because I'm not going to be fully lining it and stuff like that. So I'm definitely going to be making this sort of up as I go along, but I think I should have in the end a bra that looks very similar to this inspiration. So for the lower cut piece here, as well as the back band and all of my findings, I've gone ahead and dyed them myself. So I've used a combination of jacquard acid dye and I've used a combination of emerald with just a little bit of spruce. It's about 1% weight of goods of emerald and about 0.1% weight of goods of spruce just to get a little bit deeper and a little bit bluer. Um, so the, the material that I'm using for the lower cut piece is a mirror stretch satin. I purchased mine from Spandex World. It is 100% nylon, I believe, or nylon elastane, um, and it takes dye really, really well. So of course this one came in white and I've dyed it this really lovely green and I think it gives me that perfect sort of like satin effect. The lower cups are going to be comprised of three layers. So the outermost layer is this satin, then a layer of cut and sew foam, and then a lining. I'm going to just going to use sheer cup lining on this. And I'm going to do the stitching in the same way that I did my quilted bra, which I believe went up last week. So I'm going to use sort of the same method as we did with that bra. Um, of course, in the front bridge portion here, I'm just going to be using this bra tool, which looks, you know, very similar to my skin tone. You probably won't be able to see it all once the finished bra is done. And of course, in the upper cut pieces, the same thing here. I do have a little bit of bra tool. It looks very diaphanous. It's, it's not very noticeable at all. And I'm going to mount the lace on top of it. And then, of course, are my back band pieces as well are um, power net that I've dyed into a green color. So let's get started on the cups. 
So starting out with the cups here, I'm going to do the, the echo quilt stitching first. And I am going to be using just a little bit of double sided tape to just sort of baste the foam onto my, my cup piece. So I'm going to put a little bit of tape on both of these guys here. I end up using this stuff quite a lot. I find it's really helpful. And I like the idea that it just washes away and I never have to think about it. It's not a basting step that I'm gonna to have to remove later. <laughs> so once I do that, I went to line up my foam pieces on here. And from looking at the pattern piece, the seam allowance is still on on this side of the foam piece. So I went to align that with the edge and then I should have about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Do that on both. And now I'm just gonna take this over to the machine and start stitching. So my first inclination was to do the stitching sort of like echoing this curve here. But in looking at the inspiration bra, it actually looks like the stitching is going the opposite direction. That probably helps to give some uplift to the bra. Um, but I don't, I'm not sure how I would go about making my initial line of arcing up this way. So I think I'm just going to stick with my original instincts and follow the curve. That way I get a nice even line all the way down and it'll look similar. It'd be really easy to get them similar on both sides of the bra. So I'm going to take this over to my machine and just, you know, stitch again and again and again and again until I get these all quilted up. One eternity later. Okay, so the two cups are all quilted up now. It's not entirely even, but I think it's okay. And it did sort of like squinch them up when it came to this corner right here so that I could get some more lines in, but I think it looks fine. Like I know that if I'm looking at it really close, I see some like irregularities, but I think in the finished bra, it'll be pretty good. So now that we have this piece, I can attach the upper cups to this. So let me think. So I think the, the one that slants more downwards is gonna be the center front and the one that has a, a slant more that way is gonna be the outside edge. Um, so what I'm gonna do is a stitch and flip and I'm going to pin the lace onto there and then I'm gonna pin my bra tool and then finally I'm going to pin my lining piece on and then I'll sew with a quarter of an inch around that arc. Okay, so now that I have all four pieces, so I have my, my padded lower cut, my bra tool, my lace, and my lining, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this over to the machine and I'm gonna sew um, as close as I can to the edge of the foam here. So I should still have a quarter of an inch of seam allowance above the foam in this sort of like green section. And so that's where, where I'm gonna be sewing. That's gonna give me the flattest edge to that upper arc. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for both of these cups. Okay, so those have been sewn on and once we flip the linings to the inside, so like that, we should start getting to see like what our cup is gonna look like and I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, this is not the method that's recommended in the instructions for this bra pattern. I'm just changing it up so that I can get the style that I like. So there's that. So now I'm going to top stitch about a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch away from this arc here. And that's gonna keep everything lying flat and make sure things are 
are organized here. And then the next part I'm going to do is probably a zigzag stitch just along the scallops of the lace onto the bra tool to keep it into place. Um, I don't know that it necessarily needs it. It looks like it should be fine, but I think it's a little bit better to have it secure rather than not. So now the cups are really starting to come together. I think it looks really cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew the bridge piece in. And the way I'm gonna sew it, I'm gonna have the seam allowances coming up towards the outside of the bra because I know that the, the strapping that we're gonna put in in across the heart design will cover up those seam allowances and that way it still looks pretty good from the inside of the bra. Again, this is a deviation from what the original pattern had listed. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up my bridge piece and sew along that edge and that edge. So here's what it looks like from the inside. Of course, it has this nice smooth thing that's gonna rest against the skin. And of course, from the outside, I do have those seam allowances, but they'll be covered up with the elastic. So really thinking this is coming together. I like how this looks. Fortunately, I think this this edge down here is going to be raw in like underneath the bra and um, If I had thought about it, I probably could have figured out a way to get this edge finished as well But this is the first time I'm making this bra and as I said, you know using different directions that aren't necessarily what the pattern designer had intended um, Just so that I could have the look that I wanted so now the last thing I need to do before attaching all of the elastics is of course the, um, the back band and just gonna sew those on with a straight stitch on either side. So now that the back side pieces are sewn on, it really starts to, to look like a bra. Um, so the last step is really just putting on all of the elastics. Now this bra is sort of unique in that it uses strapping elastic everywhere. Um, strapping elastic is not as stretchy as regular elastic, so that's something to, to keep in mind when you're working with it. And just like everything else on here, this is stuff that I've dyed. So the first ones I'm going to put on are the X in the center front. And of course, that's going to cover up all of my nasty seam allowances here. So I'm just going to sew this on with zigzag stitches on either side of the strap. And I'm going to go from the bottom point here up until the point of my cup. And the same thing on this side as well. And then after that's in place, we can do the bottom and again, that's just sewn directly on top with a zigzag stitch. And then the last one scoops up and the side bar comes up to the point and then straps around your shoulders to become the strap itself. So I've got the initial first cross in there and that looks really, really good. Now I realized I made some mistakes when I was dyeing my elastics and I didn't dye enough strapping to do the bottom line of the bra. So I'm, I'm sort of stuck. I might go back and dye some more just because I think that it'll look really nice to have that sort of like satiny strap all around. My other option is I do have some Pico elastic that I've dyed. Um, I was gonna use this to make the other bra, but I just don't think that looks as nice. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and take a break. No, I'm, I'm probably, let, let's cover I'm gonna cover the top edge here and then do my straps. And then I'll, I'll take a break after that and dye some more elastic for the bottom. But so far, I really, really love how this looks. I think it just, it definitely looks Christmas and perfect. And I think it's, it's very evocative of that inspiration bra, even though I don't have every single detail that is on there. So I've put my straps on. So the straps are kind of interesting because they start here come up around and then loop back to become the strap itself. So that took some, some thinking about it. Um, I went ahead and put the strap attachment loop on the outside of the bra because I wanted it to sort of like give a nod to that original inspiration. The original Dita Von T's inspiration bra has sort of like a cage back with just straps and no power net. And I don't particularly like that style of bra on me. I think it it ends up making stuff just poke out and pudge and I don't like how it looks. So I thought like I would put this on the outside so that it would like give a nod to that. And then also it makes sure that the inside will be kept nice and, and clean and looks really good. 
So the last step obviously is just putting on the bottom band here and the hook and eyes. Um, because I have to re-dye it, I decided to go ahead and use this three quarters of an inch strapping elastic. I think it'll give more weight, more gravitas to the bottom. I think the pattern originally calls for five eighths strapping used all over the bra. Um, but of course I went with half of an inch everywhere else, but I think having the thicker elastic just on the bottom might be sort of nice. So I'm going to go ahead and dye up that. It's going to be instantaneous for you, but for me, it's probably going to be a day later. So I'm going to dye this up. And here we have the finished bra. Obviously, so, in, so I did this bottom um, strapping and a different dye lot. The color is a little bit different. Um, so definitely, like it, whenever you're dyeing materials, I would say to try to dye everything you think you're going to need all at the same time. Because even though like I use the same ratios and stuff like that, I might get just a little bit of variance in the dye. But I don't think it's too dramatic and I still think it looks okay. So very happy with how this bra has turned out. The only other thing different that I had done since the last time I showed you is that, you know, originally this strap here started at the closure and went all the way around and then looped back to form the shoulder strap as well. I didn't like how it was looking at this intersection here. Like it, it was like the strap itself looked like it was buckling over. So I just cut it and then I, I put another ring onto there and another gold ring to sort of pull out some of those gold tones in the lace itself here. Um, that way it sort of can like move at that sort of weird angle and not get that buckling effect. So if I make the Lexington bra again, I would probably just um, have the shoulder strap as a separate piece that connects down here and then put the adjustability up at the front, which is always my preference. I like to have my adjusters at the front so that I can change them while the bra is on. I never understood why ready to wear bras always put the adjusters in the back. So yeah, really, really happy with how this turned out. I think it looks very similar to the inspiration. I, you know, I didn't do the cleanest on my sort of like echo stitches here, but I think that if I practice on this a little bit more, it would look better. I just, I love this bra. I think this cutout is really, really effective. Cutouts here and here. Like I said, there's still bra tool in there. So it has all the same strength and durability, but it, it just, you know, looks like it's that floating piece. And I think it looks really nice on this, this upper cup lace as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this sort of look at recreating the Dita Von T's Madam X wireless bra, and I will hope we'll see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.